So the plan view is taking an object, slicing it in half, opening it up, and looking straight down onto it. Typically, when a building is sliced for a plan view for, the, for a set of drawings, they typically slice a structure at about three or four feet. So that means when you slice it and you open it up, that means we have things above, but we also have things below. It's a bird's eye view. So here's a floor plan. What, what I always like to do when I first look at a plan is I like to see where the front is. Where's the front door? I, I like this drawing because the front door in this particular home happens to be on the right side and not down at the bottom of the page. But typically I like to find the front door. That gives me some orientation on where I am on the drawing. Uh, and then I even like to kind of walk through just in my mind and see what, where I am. You know, this has a foyer and a living room and a hallway. And if I look to the left after coming in the door, I'm going to see a dining room. Just to kind of visually see where you are on this. Keep in mind, too, that everything, there's four orientations of the drawing. There's a front, a left a rear, and a right. Well, everything orients itself from the front. So if you haven't found the front right, then you're gonna be miss, you're gonna miss all your sides. You're gonna, you know, if you thought this was the front, then that's gonna become something other than the rear. So always make sure that you know where your front is on the drawing. Unlike a book, drawings always read from right to left. Okay, so you always, go from here over this way. And you know why that is? Kind of a crazy little reason, but because they're stapled here. So it's typically easier to just open it up and then fold it open. But they go right to left. So this one happens to have a garage at the back of the home. The garage is another way to help orient yourself towards where the building is. On any set of drawings, it doesn't matter what size the building is or how small, how big, the outermost drawing, the outermost line, is the overall size of the structure. And then as you work your way in towards the building, the measurements get tighter and tighter. So, you know, this is the overall dimension. Now this is giving you a dimension here of 10 feet to this window from the outside and whatever. But as you work your way in closer, the dimensions get tighter and tighter. Heavy solid lines will designate walls. We've sliced our building in half. Well, that's going to leave the walls going to be a certain thickness. That's why those end up being the heaviest lines our walls. Doors and windows are represented by heavy solid lines, but they're just not as heavy as the wall line. Keep in mind that every everything on the plan has a purpose. So, uh, you know, obviously the heavy dark lines if you orient yourself to just look at those and you can actually see the room layouts pretty quickly. The smaller lines are going to be your room dimensions within. And there's one there. So you can see that this room is 18 four and a half by 17 seven and a half. If you're actually doing the work or watching the work or you're measuring and you want to see how accurate this is, you have to know whether or not the dimensions are from the inside of the wall or from the outside of the wall. Because that's going to make a difference. If you have a six inch wall here, that's going to add a whole foot to the dimension of the building if you weren't, if you didn't lay it out correctly, to look at it correctly. So you can see the hash mark here. They're showing that this is from 
the uh, inside of the wall. Okay, any questions so far? Am I going too fast or? Other questions. Too boring? Yeah. Many years ago when I was going through engineering, we had a drawing class and we would only draw three views. Top, rotated it, looked at the side, rotated it again, looked at the end. Yeah. This is a different approach. This is, uh, you're giving four views here. Right. Well, not really. When you think about it, it's the same as here as you're looking at it from the top, here, straight down. The elevations are looking at it straight on, like you said, and then the third one is just slicing it in half and opening it up. It gives more of a perspective when you slice it in half. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it does. And we'll, we'll get into that. In my mind, and I think the slicing it in half is probably the least used, but that's, for me, a lot of guys you know, love that section. Yeah, it depends how visual you are and all, but but yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's a plan, a section, and an elevation. How would we figure out what this is? What do you think this Jeez. is coming on uh, here? Uh, wood. Yeah, it's just designating the wood wall or could be masonry wall. I forget what that measurement is, but what it's saying is if we don't know, where would we find it at? Yeah, just go to the front page. We just look at those designations and oh, okay. That's what that is. Here's another little road sign. Okay, right here. You might look at that. What that's going to tell us is, and, and again, we find this symbol in the designations that we went to early on. That's going to tell us the wall type. Okay, that's number one. And it's coming from that wall, number one. So if we went to the, they call it a schedule. If we go to the wall schedule, look up number one, that's going to tell us what that wall is made up of. And it's probably going to even tell us the material, the insulation type, the drywall type, the exterior type. It's probably going to be that whole wall system. But right off the bat, if we just go to one and that schedules, we'll figure out exactly what that wall is and the size and what, well, what makes it up. Here's a wall number 11 right here. That's probably just a regular 2x4 wall, maybe 2x6, which is drywall on each side. I, I'm not sure, but whatever. So, you, you know, you might look at this and go, wow, you know, there's a lot going on, but really when you break it down, it's not as bad as you think. Um, it's really pretty easy to get through. This is just showing floor break, just a dotted line. Keep in mind, you know, it says FB floor break. What is okay, you might not know what FB is. What's that? What is a floor break? Uh, floor break would be maybe this is going from tile to carpet. Maybe it's going from tile to linoleum or lino, uh, whatever. It might be going to hardwood, but it's just saying that's where the two different materials are going to come together. And you can see it in a, in a structure like this or in a room like this that's all open. The floor break, uh, you know, can happen in a bunch of different areas within that space. You know, they're, keeping the kitchen all to this side of the floor break, and here's another one right here. So this probably has three or four different types of materials within that one area. I think the reason I kind of like having that in there, this slide, is it just shows you that, you know, you really need to look closely at what you're looking at on the drawing, and you can't just go through it quickly. One of the things I used to always like to do with a set of drawings was when I was a construction manager and I was given a project, I used to always take the set of drawings and I'd go through with about 10 different colored markers. And I'd always mark out as I went through everything. So I'd have, you know, anything that was carpentry would be in yellow. Anything plumbing would be in blue. You know, electrical was red. And then that way I could go through a set of drawings and quickly know whose was what and what, who was responsible for what. It also allowed me to know whether or not I noted 
what that item was on the drawing. Because there's an awful lot on there, and it's easy to miss something. And that one little thing you miss is probably the one thing you're looking for, the one thing that's going to come back and bite you later on. So, you know, it's just a good way of knowing whether or not you've covered all the bases. And that's one of the things I was talking about earlier on that, you know, in the future, I think you're going to find more and more drawings in color. How much nicer would it be to open these up and have it in color? You know, just visually, it'd be a whole lot easier. So, I think that's going to come. Oh, and here, you're saying what's a floor break. Here's, here's an actual picture of it. I forgot that was even on there. What does WIC stand for? Of the previous walk in closet. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Oh, walk in good. Closet. Yeah. Yeah. Right here? Yep, walk in closet. And you can see, what do you think RNS is? Rod and shelf. Uh, yeah, sometimes you got to kind of, that, that may or may not be on there, you just kind of have to think about it a little bit sometimes. Let's see, I'm in a closet. We talked about the plan view is slicing something in half at three feet or four, wherever, in that area, and we've lifted off the top. Well, when we've lifted off the top, that means we have things above us and things below us. Anything above us on that plan, because we're looking down, and anything that should be above us is designated by the light dashed lines. So if you look, Here's some light dashed lines looking straight down on this kitchen. Here's some light dashed lines. That's showing the upper cabinets. Okay, because they're on that part of the section that we took off. Here's some light dashed lines here. And these openings. That's showing us the arch, the header side. Not the header size, but the arch. And here's a picture. See how it drops? Mm -hmm. And that's what that's showing us here. Okay, the lower cabinets, looking straight down, are longer dash lines. Might not be just cabinets either, but that means it's something that's below us that we're looking at. And that's designated by the light dash lines, but they're longer. Anything above us is shorter dash lines. And again, those are those little signs that, you know, right off the bat allow you to pick where something is located and what you're looking at. Would that typically be spelled out or you just kind of figure out No, it, it wouldn't it would be it would look like that so you just figure out in the kitchen that's right what happened. Yep. yeah yeah and you can see you know if you looked at this you go what the heck's going on there but you know lower cabinets upper cabinets here's an example of longer dash lines down low and this is actually from a foundation plan. We talked about the architectural to include the foundation plan. Well, this is a foundation plan, and you look at this and you go, what the heck? Well, it's pretty simple when you think about it. The outer line is designated by that longer dashed lines, and that's the footing. That's the width of the footing. And it's dashed because you can't see the footing. You know, something that's down below me, but I, I can't see it. So that's showing us that the footing, and then right here it says 16 inch by 8 inch strip footing. And uh, you know maybe at another time we'll do a structural drawing class and get into it a little bit further. But I just wanted to show you that the lines aren't just cabinets; it's anything that you can't see that's down below. But here. if you go to page two, you can see. What yeah, good. Now Steve was saying, see this? Or a four two. This is one of our road signs on our GPS. Okay, well what this is doing is it's cutting this wall in half at that point. It's looking in this direction because you can see the arrow and it's saying if I go to drawing number two on page A4.2 
I'll see a cross section of what that looks like. And that'll give me the dimension, that'll give me the whole kit and caboodle, whatever, of what that is. And again, you know, you gotta pay attention to your road signs, and it's taking you to another page. Here's a light dash line showing the door swing. Here's a set of French doors that open this way, showing us the swing. We also, this door has a 10, this one has a 15, here's an 11. While doors and windows on a, in a set of drawings will always be in a schedule. So if I go to the window or door schedule, let's say I go to the door schedule and I look at 15, that's going to tell me what that door is. It's going to tell me the size, the material. Uh, 10 would be, would tell me that these are French doors. It's going to tell me what type of door, the size. Light dash lines might even refer to options. Sometimes if you're looking through a set of drawings, you might see options. Uh, you know, whether there was a closet or fireplace option or something. That's something that maybe is there or may not be there. It's designated by a light dash line. Here's a door that says 3068 on it. Now what that's saying is it's a door that is three foot wide by six foot eight. It's not 30 inches by 68 inches. And, and I know that sounds like a simple little thing, but you wouldn't believe how often that gets missed and something's ordered wrong. So it's always in feet, inches, feet, inches, and the width is always first. Whenever you're doing a window, cabinets, doors, or anything, width is always first, height is always second. So that's three foot, zero inches by six foot, eight inches. Is that just another way to do do the window or door without a schedule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a smaller project or something, it might just list the size of the door there. But then, what's that still telling you? That, what, what information do you still need to know about that door? Material. Yeah, material. What, what is it? Is it a hollow door? Is it a solid door? What panel door? Flush? You know, I need to know what kind of door it is. So, Chances are there's probably still a schedule somewhere, or at least, but there may not be. You know, I mean, you might be right because it's not referring me to anywhere. So, okay, it's also saying that it's got a one foot trans. What do you think the trans is? Trans. Transom. Yeah, it's got a one foot transom above it. CPT, V, what do you think? That's showing us here. Carport. Carpet and vinyl. Break. One size vinyl, one size carpet. Uh, again, the acronyms, sometimes it's tough to figure out what they are. And these may or may not be listed. So you sometimes just have to think about it. But this looks like a fairly complicated area, but yeah, when you break it down, it's really pretty basic. You know, it's given us dimensions, it's given us options in place, it's given us the doors, telling us what the room is, gives us the dimensions of the room right underneath it. This, this is really a pretty good set here because it's saying the room, it's two-story, nine-foot ceiling is optional. 